Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway Beat. The latest at Roundabout Theatre Company is the new musical Death Takes a Holiday here at the Laura Pels Theatre. It features music and lyrics by Maury Estin and a book by Peter Stone and Thomas Meehan. We're here to celebrate with the company on opening night. It's very different from anything else I've ever done. Where I've, I've done more comedy, like the producers and Hairspray, uh, but Maury more played the score for it to me. Uh, the fact was that Peter Stone had had the idea, and they had worked together for some years. And Peter Stone passed away in 2003, and I, I ran into Maury, and he, he took me up to his apartment and played the score. And I said, "This is such a gorgeous, brilliant score." I'd love to work on it with you, and, and he brought me into it. Because it's not just a musical comedy. I mean, I, we've had some people come to the theater, and they, they think it's going to be a tap dancing chorus girls and, and a lot of cl clowns, and they, a lot of them walk out at intermission and say, what was that? But, but this is more operatic. It's, it's a much more deeper, serious piece of theater, I feel. Uh, and what attracted you to the story, Tom? Well, I, I, I like the idea of, of love and death on the stage against each other in a kind of battle which is ultimately won by love but uh it, it, it's you know it's 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 a much more intriguing story it's, it's not just boy meets girl boy loses girl it's girl meets death girl loses death girl gets death <laughs> what attracted you to write it and how did it all come about? Celebration of life. Peter Stone and I had just written a musical based on the worst maritime disaster in history. 1,500 people died. We made it about dreams. And I looked at Peter and he looked at me and he said, let's do something small. And I said, let's do chamber music and let's do a celebration of life. And he said, what about Death Takes a Holiday? And I said, well, you know, I'm a little nervous about the title. But we both know that it's death who comes to life and wants to know why life is wonderful. And the show celebrates life. It's an explosion of the power and and the universal uh, value of love in our lives and we just threw ourselves into it we knew it would be like a small chat like working with Yo-Yo Ma and Yitzhak Perlman which explains why our brilliant cast our mostly headliners decided to work together and to become a chamber ensemble and working with them was like working with like riding a Rolls Royce Talk about the style of music that you wrote for the show. Well, I knew that I first, uh, that I knew you have a very unlikely story. It's a fantasy. So I knew I had to go back to the period in the early 20s, right, right after World War II, and get the feel of that period so that we would take you away from the current world and allow you to sing and, 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 and let your, your grasp on reality loose a little bit so you can buy into a story about death coming to life. But once we do that, then I think I was able to lean back and get into my own heart and the way I write musicals, which is to try to get under every person's skin in their human experience. The, the, a mother's loss of her son in the war, a girl's discovery of her new love, um, all of those things. Another girl just singing about loving a guy who doesn't love her back. You know, all of those things that make life so wonderful and so uh, extraordinary. I wanted soul to know this love men that makes them fight and hold on fast through all. And so I found like them a girl to sing to, and now can sing as I fall.
get a, a basically fundamentally romantic story. It's about a man who is really fed up with his job and fairly really needs, his job happens to be killing people, but he really feels he needs a rest. And so he takes a holiday in a completely different environment and, uh, and falls for the people he's with, you know, and wishes the holiday would never come to an end. You could look at it that way, and I think that's quite a way, good way of looking at it. Then you get all the metaphysical stuff, which you can add on later as you, uh, as you watch and enjoy it. Oh, it's just been... I don't know, I mean... Growing up, I listened to so many, to Maury, and, and I listened to Rebecca sing, and I wanted to do this, and now I, I am, and to work with these people and do a show like this, that I show, you know, the type of show that, what made me love theater, these very classic shows with this soaring music, it's, it's very surreal because... It's what the little girl in me always wanted, and I'm doing it, so <laughs> I feel very lucky. It's been a fascinating experience. You know, we all so, so desperately want to work on new musicals, and this is a new musical. Uh, to be working with Mari Estin, whose melodies are beyond compare, and uh, Tom Meehan, the words, and working with Doug Hughes, it's really been such a gift, an incredible gift, and to play with the wonderful actors that, that I get to share the stage with is really wonderful. I play the Duchess Stephanie Lamberti, and uh, I, I see her as sort of the, um, you know, the voice of reason, the, uh, the, the calm uh, presence, the one that you know, knows and sees all, and you know, the, the, the calm maternal figure in the middle. Um, but she can also, I get to be kind of funny, and, and, and she gets to be very heartbreaking in the second act. You know, she's, she's really mourning her son throughout the play. And of course, when, her, when the daughter is taken, you think it's the last thing that, sh that, that should happen to, the, to this woman and, the, and her husband. But uh, she's, you know, I think she, she comes to appreciate her life all the more. And, and uh, that's what this play is all about. These were his soldiers, that is hot. Three winning ships from Baccarat Piled in that closet, toy upon toy Belonged to Roberto, my boy He sat at this window, stared at that moon Wrote in his diary, played bassoon How he loved winter Hiking he go, leaving his footprints deep in the snow. It's been a wonderful experience. Um, it's a funny story. I saw Maury and Peter in a Chinese restaurant about 13 years ago over on 2nd Avenue as I was walking by. And I had done Titanic and I went into the restaurant because I saw them in there and there were papers all spread everywhere. And I said, what are you guys doing? And they said, we're working on this new show, Death Takes a Holiday. And of course I said, well, I hope there's a good part for me. And left, you know, having no idea that all these years later, I would be doing it. So it's been fun for me. And um, of course, I knew Peter and know Maury and had worked with Tom. And so uh, it's been great, all of us doing something together. I play Alice Lamberti, and she is the spicy new flapper. She's the American amongst all of these Italians. And uh, so she's just, she's the life of the party, you know. I get to sing this great number, The Shimmy, and uh, struck, strut my stuff and instruct death about the fun, sexy side of life. So there's, there's nothing bad about playing that. My van up your feet today, dance your blues away. We'll shake and shimmy, pushing the bounds of taste. Now take your arm and put it around my waist And glide me on that polished floor We can't want for more As we explore how naughty we can be The shimmy like they do in Paris It's been awesome because I'm on stage maybe all of 11 minutes so it's a terrific piece for me. Talk about that beautiful number you have. I've got, I've got a great number. I mean, in all seriousness, um, uh, I, I come on midway through the show, and uh, I really sort of turn the story on its on its head. Um, certainly emotionally, um, the story takes a real turn, and we delve into some you know deeper, more uh, sincere 
uh, themes, um, and it's a great number. You know, Maury writes these hauntingly beautiful melodies, uh, and this certainly is is one of them. And I'm I'm lucky as hell to get to sing it. So when you knew you were going on, how much pre-rehearsal did you have? Uh, I had only had. The best way to describe it for me is I had been on the, the staircase that was staged right, but I never had climbed the staircase left, just because we didn't get to, you know, we didn't get to rehearse it. So there were things that we had, you know, kind of skimmed through, and then there were things that we focused on. But uh, over the last three performances, and this is my fourth, um, I really got to integrate with the cast and they've been so you know so welcoming to the choices that I'm making that are might be slightly different than Julian's um, but it, it's really been a, a fantastic night and and my heart goes out to Julian because something like this happening losing your voice in laryngitis he has given his heart and soul the past you know uh, through all of the previews and in rehearsals and and my heart really goes out to him because he is you know a, definitely a huge huge part of the creative process that has you know transpired today and he will be back soon and I can't wait. Well, Grazia is um, a young woman who's just gotten engaged and they're driving back from Venice when they're in a car accident and she's thrown from the car and she comes face to face with death. Um, and I think throughout the show she realizes there's something greater than what's going on around her and she's ready for that next great adventure. It's so beautifully written. Talk about Maury's score, the book. Maury's score is beautiful, and Tom Meehan's writing is clever and touching, which is it's wonderful to be able to present both sides of the coin. I think, you know, the romance, Maury's music certainly addresses and talks to. Um, it's exciting to be up there singing these soaring melodies because that is love, isn't it? It just comes from within you, and it sings as high as it possibly can.